In this lesson, we will learn strategies for solving multiplication problems that have a missing factor. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to use at least one of the strategies in order to find the missing factor in a multiplication problem. So let's say that we're faced with one of these problems with a missing factor. Let's consider this equation, question mark times 7 equals 56. How can we figure out what that missing number is? Let's look at three different strategies for solving this problem. Strategy number one, our first strategy, will be to use the multiplication facts you know. This sounds really straightforward and obvious. However, there are lots of students who do panic, get a little frozen when they see an unfamiliar multiplication equation that has a missing factor instead of a missing product. Instead of panicking, just think about what facts do you know well? Perhaps there are some times tables that are really easy for you, like the two times tables, the five or the 10. If you run into a problem with one factor that is two, five, or 10, or some other facts that you know really well, use what you know. Let's consider this problem. Question mark times 10 equals 50. It might be really obvious for you, really easy to see that the missing factor is five because you know that five times 10 equals 50. So use what you know, fill in what you know, and be confident in that knowledge. Five times 10 does equal 50. If you're a student who doesn't feel confident in your multiplication facts quite yet, don't worry, we have two other strategies that can help you solve these missing factor problems. Our second strategy for finding a missing factor in a multiplication problem is to use the factor that you know. This strategy uses the skip counting skill that we used in lesson one when we found multiples of numbers. So let's take this problem. Question mark times three equals 27. So we need to find what that question mark is. In order to do that, using strategy number two, we would need to skip count by threes. This is something that lots of students are comfortable with. And let's take a look at it. Counting by threes, we would have, we just skip count until we reached the product, the 27. That's our goal. So we just keep going. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. There we are, we've reached our goal. Now we need to know how many times did we skip count before we got to 27. So let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We counted 9 times, so that question mark number must be a 9. And we fill that in and we read it as 9 times 3 equals 27. And we check our work and it does makes sense, it is correct. Nine times three does equal 27. We found our missing factor. How about if you run across a problem where skip counting is not gonna work? Or some fact that is unfamiliar to you, some, some skip counting fact? We can have a third strategy, and that is to draw a picture. This is, uh, let's look at a new problem question mark times seven equals 56, this first question that we considered. Maybe you're not comfortable skip counting by sevens, you're not comfortable with your seven times tables quite yet. Drawing a picture can get you that answer that you're looking for. In order to draw a picture for this problem, we'd use a skill that we've you've probably encountered in earlier grades when you were first learning about multiplication and first learning about division. We'll just call on that skill and we'll use it here until you are comfortable with your multiplication facts. So for this, we need to draw the same number of ovals or boxes or whatever shape as that factor we do know, which is a seven. So we'll draw seven ovals here, four, five, six, seven. And then we would place tally marks, one in each oval going around until we get to 56. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'd keep on going, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 
15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and I'll just keep counting until I reach my goal number. And when I do reach my goal number, I should have an even number of tallies in each oval. 55, 56, there we go, I've reached my goal. And I can look and see that yes, I do have an even number. I have eight tallies in each oval. So we can fill in that missing factor as eight. Eight times seven equals 56. Check our answer, is that correct? And it is correct. Eight times seven does equal 56. We've found our missing factor. So let's review what we've learned. We've had three strategies that you can use to find missing factors in equations. The first strategy is to use the multiplication facts you know, which sounds very obvious, but it is true that lots of students kind of freeze when they see these missing factor equations. Don't panic. You know this stuff. You've been learning it. Be confident in what you know. The second strategy is to use the factor you know. Look at the equation. If it's a number, you know how to skip count. Skip count until you find that product and then count back the number of times you had to count and that's your missing factor. And the final strategy is to draw a picture. If you're feeling really stuck, go ahead, draw a picture, put a tally mark in each box until you get to the, the product and you'll have your answer for your missing factor.